So Ava, what is Pentecost Sunday? It's the birthday of the church. And Harper, what are we going to do? Celebrate! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Big happy birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, church! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Look at Robbie. Happy birthday. Real loud. Happy birthday. Oh. Oh. Say happy birthday. Look at Robbie. Happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Hold it up. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! We miss you! Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Yay. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and happy birthday to the church. Welcome to worship for Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, 2020. May the Lord be with you. Before we get begin worship, though, I want to provide a brief update on some things going on at our church with the pastoral transition and the corona guidelines. First, my family's last Sunday in Carrier Mills will be Monday, June 15th. And on that day, my family will move out of the parsonage on Ledford Road and Pastor Chris Weiss and his family will move in all on the same day. However, the, the official transition date is July 1st. So that means that I will be uh, living in Mattoon and coming down to Carrier Mills for, sun, for a couple of Sunday mornings. Simultaneously, Bishop Frank Beard has offered guidelines for using our church building and gathering together. Let me say that Bishop Beard has done a fantastic job of offering steps to help to keep our churches safe and healthy during this time of shelter in place. First, it was announced late Friday that we are allowed to safely worship in person outside. So this evening, we'll gather on the church lawn right here at 6 p.m. for in-person worship. So let me give you some guidelines about that. We need to wear masks and households need to stay 10 feet apart. And so bring a lawn chair and there will be a, there will be a sermon and it will be the same one as I'm giving in this online video. So get your mask and bring a lawn chair and come to pray, hear a sermon and see your church family again. We'll continue the outdoor service worship, worship service next week. However, the time is undetermined. Stay tuned on Facebook about the worship time. We need to kind of coordinate with the other churches in the neighborhood so that we're not interfering with each other. I'm also in conversation with church leaders on how to celebrate communion one last time before I leave. It might look something like our uh, Christmas Eve communion service, so stay tuned on that as well. Otherwise, as it stands right now, only groups of 10 or fewer can be in the building for meetings or small group studies. I ask that you remain patient and faithful as we adjust and learn on the fly to all of this. I realize my bias when I say this though, but Carrier Mills UMC has an outstanding job of remaining connected during these unprecedented times. Despite having to make some changes since March, I have remained encouraged and optimistic in the face of so many challenges that have come our way. So now, let's turn our hearts towards worship and join me for an opening prayer 
for Pentecost. Gracious God, we are reminded again when the first believers in Jesus were given the courage to tell others about him. We believe you give us that same courage to tell others about Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know that sometimes we are fearful and we feel alone. But just like that Pentecost long ago, we too are surrounded by your love and presence. Help us live in such a way that others see in us a reflection of your love. Help us to have the courage to tell others about the difference it makes in our lives to trust in your love and care. Help us to see those around us who want to be in fellowship with other Christians. Help us to witness to one another so that we grow in our faith. Through the power of your Holy Spirit and the witness of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray today. Amen. During this time of stay at home and shelter in place, I, I can't seem to get the words of Paul and he, the letter he wrote to the Philippians off of my mind. Paul was in prison at Rome at the time and he said, I find contentment in Jesus Christ, no matter, regardless what my circumstances are. Contentment doesn't mean happiness, it means to be at peace. During this time, I find my contentment or at peace when I reflect or think about the blessings that God has given me, I know we're not together this morning in person, but I ask you to sing along with me as we sing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a up above me, I'm a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I know I'm not wealthy and these clothes are not new. I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. And to me, that's all that matters, though the world cannot see. Thank you, Lord. For your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me of a good place to sleep. There's food on the table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. In a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Hello boys and girls, it's Christina here with a children's time this morning. So good morning. Buongiorno, bonjour, buenos dias, guten morgen, mahalo, shalom. If you don't understand everything that I just said, it's because I was speaking in different languages. I just said good morning in Italian and in French, Spanish, German, Hawaiian, and Hebrew. People from different countries sometimes speak different languages. 
People in Italy speak Italian. People in France speak French. Lots of people speak Spanish from all over the world. You get the idea. But if people from all these places were put in a room together, they would probably not be able to understand each other because they don't know each other's languages. They would need a translator, someone who knows several languages, to tell each person what the other person said in their own language. Pastor Todd's going to talk about a story from the Bible today, but it goes a little something like this. After Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus' disciples were all together in the city of Jerusalem for a big Jewish festival called Pentecost. Jews came to Jerusalem from all over the world to celebrate Pentecost in the holy city. But suddenly, a sound came from heaven. It was loud and sounded like a wind, like a tornado. And this loud sound filled the entire house where the disciples were gathered. Then the Bible tells us that what looked like flames appeared right over their heads and rested on each disciple. And then the most amazing thing happened. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages. They didn't know these languages. They'd never spoken them before, but the Holy Spirit made it possible for them to speak in languages from all over the world. Now, people from the homes and the streets nearby heard all this racket, and they came to the house to find out what was going on. When the people realized that they could understand what the disciples were saying, no matter what language they spoke, the people were confused and amazed. They wondered what was happening. So the disciple Peter came forward and told them that with the gift of the Holy Spirit, amazing things would happen. And then he told them about his friend Jesus and that Jesus came to be their friend too. The Bible tells us about 3,000 people were uh, heard Peter's message that day and they became Christians and were baptized. 3,000 people from near and far who spoke many different languages but who were able to understand Peter thanks to the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. What an incredible story! I'm so glad that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit was to bring us understanding of one another. Sometimes we really have to work at it, but with the Spirit's help, we can do anything. Let's end in a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and all of the amazing good things that happen in the world because the Holy Spirit is with us. Help us to try and understand others even when we speak other languages. Thank you for our friend and Savior Jesus and for your love and grace. Amen. Hey guys, it's Dante. I'm going to pray for our offering this morning, so pray with me. Living God, you are the Lord of all. Only you can send your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty and in times of joy and peace. We are grateful that you are continually working in our lives and the world to fulfill our, your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey guys. It's Darnell. Today's scripture reading from for Pentecost Sunday comes from the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 15 through 17. And from the day after the Sabbath, and the day on which you bring the sheep of the elevation, offering you shall count all seven weeks, they shall be complete. You shall count until the day after the seventh Sabbath, fifty days. Then you shall present an offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring from the settlements two loaves of bread as an elevation offering, each made of two-tenths of an ephah. They shall be of choice flour baked with leafing as first fruits to the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning is the day we celebrate Pentecost. So, and so often when we think of Pentecost, we think of it as the birthday of the Church of Jesus Christ. Some churches sing happy birthday and have balloons and cake and a party atmosphere to make the day special. I've been in churches where they celebrate Pentecost with long streamers that run the length of the sanctuary weaving, weaving through the light fixtures. Of, and of course, we can also wear something red to recognize the day. Today is special because the Holy Spirit poured out on the disciples who had gathered in Jerusalem as Jesus had instructed, not simply to remind them that he was still with them, 
but to empower and in equip them to be witnesses to the grace of Jesus Christ for those who had not yet heard the good news of his saving love for them. So today is not so much about us as it is about the potential that we have to reach people who are not in church with us. Pentecost is one of the oldest celebrations of the church. For most of the history of Christianity, it was the second uh, it was the second in importance only to Easter as a high holy day for the early church. Can you imagine if we took Pentecost as seriously as the early church did and through our celebration said to the world, Pentecost is more important than Christmas. If we consider church history, then it's true. Pentecost is a festival day that has its roots in an annual feast held by our ancestors in the Jewish faith. The roots of the Jewish festival of Pentecost come from our reading from Leviticus this morning. It says, You shall count until the day after the seventh seventh Sabbath, fifty days. Then you shall present an offering of new grain to the Lord. It's a time when Jewish people count the days from the past from the second day of Passover to the day before the grain harvest. That's why I'm coming to you from a golden field of grain that's ready to be harvested. The purpose of the counting is to remind observers of the connection between Passover and harvest. Passover, which freed the Israelites from the physical bondage in Egypt, and the harvest, which redeemed them from physical and spiritual bondage. And so it was that for this feast day, that people from all over those places, all of these different cultural and language and ethnic groups, had come into Jerusalem to make an offering in in remembrance of the freedom and redemption they had been given through that covenant. And so Pentecost came to commemorate the day when the Spirit of Christ came to rest on the disciples and all of the other people who had gathered in Jerusalem for that Feast of Pentecost. In the book of Acts, which records what happens after Jesus' ascension, it records that as the apostles were gathered together in Jerusalem, they were filled with the Holy Spirit by a mighty wind and flames of fire that gave them the ability to speak in other languages. And from this time on, the people in that room are able to spread the good news of salvation offered through Jesus freely as a loved gift from God. The day of Pentecost was a day of transformation for many people because they heard the good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed for the first time in ways they could really understand, ways that made sense to them for their lives and their circumstances that spoke to them and they understood. It was a life-changing message for people, many of whom became converts and were baptized. Let me tell you about two truly Pentecostal moments from my life. They were the bookends of my theological training on the shores of Lake Michigan at Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. The first was the opening worship for our first year student orientation. As my classmates and I made our way into the chapel, we quickly realized that the number of chairs coincided with the number of us worshiping that morning. There was none of that awkwardness where everyone spreads out with two chairs separating them and everyone kind of isolates themselves. We were intentionally packed in side by side. And what made that experience was the diversity of the people in that chapel. People of all ages and races. People from the United States, Africa, the Philippines, South Korea, and South America. And we came to that place because God found us in our corner of the world and brought us to that place to be with those people. And when we sang, everyone sang. And we worshiped together. And as we did that, I had a vision. I don't often have visions, but I do have one that I have one that I consider to be spirit a spirit-inspired image at this particular key moment. I saw a hole appear in the roof of the chapel, and I could see the blue sky above with clouds coming in and going. And then I saw a globe of light come through that hole and kind of remain suspended above us. This vision communicated to me that something spiritual and significant was happening. It was Pentecostal, and I was certain that the Holy Spirit was in that place. And I knew that the church would be okay. The potential in that chapel was just amazing. 
Fast forward four years later to my second Pentecostal experience. It was our graduation from seminary. And this time around, there were even more people there. But just imagine all the families flying in from those distant places to celebrate the work that we had accomplished. It was the last time that I would see many of my friends that I had made while studying in seminary and growing so much. We all scattered to our annual conferences, spread throughout the world for commissioning after that day. We still keep track of each other on Facebook. But we will never be together again like while we were students on the shores of Lake Michigan at Garrett. I didn't have any visions at graduation, but check this out. It was May of 2014, and it snowed. That's right, it snowed in Illinois in May. This time I was awestruck by the languages and places and experiences represented in that place at graduation. When the Lord's Prayer was prayed, everyone said it in their native language. The cadence was the same, but the words were different from each row to row of the church to another. That's when I witnessed firsthand that the kingdom of God isn't a political or governmental or geographic entity created by people. The kingdom of God is much more than that. It's people with hearts for God stretching beyond borders and oceans and space and time. And it's guided to this day by the Spirit of Jesus. Take a moment to think of your church that way. The Holy Spirit is uniting us with those who went before us and those who will go after us. The Spirit is working all over God's creation. God's powerful love that melts hearts and changes minds in ways that only Jesus can. That's the same message that the apostles were equipped to take to all the corners of the earth on that Pentecost day. They went from town to town and city to city to tell people one thing. They shared an amazing story about how they had met God in the form of a person. And that person told them and showed them how to love. They said, I met this guy who showed me that God really does love me. And because I know that God loves me and you, we can love each other as special children of God. Friends, has anyone told you that recently? Has anyone showed you that recently? Have you told that to anyone lately? Turn to the person sitting next to you at home there and say, because God loves me, I can love you. Because God loves me, I can love you. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. God loves me, 
I can love you. Happy Pentecost, friends. Be good. Have fun. Stay in love with God.